They say time heals all wounds, but not for me. It's been 30 years since Titanic and I still think about Jack every day. I often find myself staring at the ocean. My life was anything but simple once I landed in New York. I found it difficult to adjust to a normal life. At night I would toss and turn, haunted by the screams. In the day, I wept, consumed by my misery. Slowly I slipped into a state of madness. Flashbacks vivid in my mind. My grief from losing Jack pushed me over the edge, and I was sent to a mental institution. Come along, Rose. Don't fight it. The crazy house is the best place for you. We'll make you forget all about Titanic. Lock her in isolation. Because there was no record of Jack ever being on Titanic, nobody believed he existed. They said he was a figment of my imagination. Do you often have trouble telling reality from fantasy? I felt like I was standing on the precipice of madness with nobody to catch me. The doctors told me Jack wasn't real. But I knew he was. He is dead and gone, lady. He is dead and gone. So I hatched a plan. A plan to escape. I waited until night, when the halls were empty. I crept through the air ducts of the mental institute. It wasn't long until I discovered I was missing. But by then, I was gone. Come red. Come red. Rose Dawson has escaped. I repeat, Rose Dawson has escaped. I walked for days, alone and exhausted, determined to make it back to the city back to New York. The journey almost destroyed me and I was soon overcome with a burning fever. I was delirious, slipping in and out of consciousness. The doctor told me it was withdrawals from the pills I'd been forced to take in the mental institute. I was riddled with horrible nightmares, each more terrifying than the last. But I survived. Finally, my fever broke and I started to regain my senses. She's out of danger. It was then I heard some remarkable news. There were more survivors from Titanic. I had to know. Could it be possible? Could Jack be alive? So I came up with a plan. I was no artist, at least not like Jack, but I designed some flyers. I headed to the docks, looking for information. Little did I know, I was being followed. It was her. Two legs, two arms, red hair. I was sure of it. It all started a couple of days ago. This real fancy chap comes into my office, saying he needs a private detective. How do you do? He hands me a photo of this girl. Real classy bird. He said it was his ex fiancee gonna get married or something. He was obsessed with her. And he was obsessed with boats. Don't know why. He was loaded. Wealthy industrialist. And I needed the money. So I found out where she lived and passed on her address. I told him she takes a walk to the ocean every morning. He said he had big plans for her. I headed to the beach like I do every morning to think about Jack. I didn't know I was being hunted. The first shot pierced the air, narrowly missing me. And then I saw him. It was Cal. She was down on the beach when she was shot. Name on her ID is Rose Dawson. Doesn't look good. Heart rate is dropping. We're losing her. Prep her for surgery. Everything will be okay, Rose. 
shadows. The doctor said I died. For two minutes my heart had stopped, but I survived. I was badly injured from the bullet and I'd lost a piece of my brain. I had to learn to walk again. The police sent a detective to come and talk to me about the shooting. Even though I'd lost a part of my brain, I still knew who was responsible. Cal Hockley, my ex-fiance, had shot me on the beach. The police searched for him all over New York, but they didn't find him. I was terrified for my life, so the police put me in the witness protection program. This guy is still out there, Rose. I recommend you enter the witness protection program. They sent me off to a small village and gave me a new identity. My new name was Muddy May Suggins. I had an FBI agent who went everywhere with me. He took me to the beach for therapy sessions. But all I could think about was Jack. I remembered that newspaper article, More Survivors from Titanic. So I wrote a letter to the captain of the second rescue ship. I had to know, was Jack still alive? Aye, lassie. I was captain of the ship that found the other survivors from Titanic. We was out there, dead of the night, fishing up their remaining corpses. We came across one young lad, frozen like a popsicle he was. We pulled him in, and that's when we discovered... Did, did you find anyone? He was still alive. Oh my god! We warmed him up as best we could. Slowly, he started to defrost, just like a frozen hot dog. His eyes started flickering. It was then he finally spoke. Jack's still alive? Holy fudge buck! I was in complete shock. My dearest Jack was still alive? I showed the ladder to my bodyguard. I needed to know I wasn't going mad. I'd like you to read this. Rose, you have to find Jack. Yes, that's what I thought. We spent the night celebrating together. I was positively giddy with joy. I hadn't danced like this since that night on the lower deck. I was still a little shaky from the brain injury. I fractured two ribs and broke a toe, but I didn't care. <laughs> Jack was alive! The next morning I got up bright and early. I borrowed a bicycle from an old lady, and my bodyguard and I started the long trip back to New York. You won't keep still! I can't keep still! No! I can't catch up with you! Speed up! No! <laughs> My, oh my, wasn't there a big commotion. When word broke there were more survivors from Titanic, everyone in London had to sneak a gander. Poor boy was in bad shape, shivering like a leaf. He was transported out of London to one of the Queen's finest hospitals. That's where I first laid eyes on him. He was exhausted and quickly slipped into a deep sleep. I never left his side, delivering him his medicine as I see fit. He had no ID, and there was no record of him on Titanic. So who was this mysterious boy I found alive? I thought about what he must have gone through that night. Was soon dead from the icy cold water, but he wasn't dead, no. 
he was only asleep. I would check on him at night. He was lost in his dreams. For days on end, he slept. We had the finest team of ladies searching frantically for his identity. Hey, yes, ma'am. If you will, just a moment, I'll get a supervisor. And then we got a call. We weren't prepared for what we were about to hear. It felt as though we'd been riding for years. On our way back to New York, back to Jack. We stopped at a small village to rest and get supplies. It was then I saw something truly shocking. I snatched the poster from the wall and studied it closely. I felt as if the world was closing in. It was Jack. I was sure of it. Had Jack been lying to me? Was he actually a criminal? I felt like I was standing on the precipice of madness yet again. Did I really know Jack at all? I was so confused. I felt like I'd been asleep for a hundred years. My memories were fuzzy. The doctors said I'd fragmented amnesia. But every time I closed my eyes, I saw her. She was beautiful. But who was she? I couldn't remember my own name, but in my dreams, we danced together under the sea. I had nothing in my pockets but a picture. A picture of her. It was early morning when we got the tip from Scotland Yard. That boy from Titanic, yes, finally, had a name. What's this? Dawson. Turns out, he was one of America's most wanted outlaws. Oh, and of course he denied it. Don't you believe them? You know no, I didn't son, do it. Let's go. Come on, let's you know go. I didn't do it. But we had proof. They called him the Kid. Fastest gun in the West, some said. Damn, my face. He went on a crime spree right across California. U.S. Marshals had been chasing him for years. Find Dorson. Scotland Yard thinks he must have snuck off to France. Tried to lay low. Maybe start a new life. But now, we had him. The Court of England prepared the paperwork. The boy was going to prison. I'd been traveling for days with many wrong turns along the way, but I finally made it back to New York. I hadn't slept worrying about Jack, so I probably looked 20 years older. My mind was racing as I thought about that poster. I needed answers, so I hired an investigator. I had to know, was Jack a criminal? The detective worked tirelessly, knocking on doors and asking questions. Do you know this boy? I have no idea, mister. Finally, he discovered something remarkable. I found Jack's birth certificate. And he has a twin brother. That's not possible. In theory, yes. But in practice, no. Let me show you. I couldn't believe it when I saw the papers. It all made sense. Jack wasn't an outlaw. It was his brother all along, Zach Dawson. My dearest Jack was innocent, and I had proof. I knew what I had to do. I had to travel back to London and clear Jack's name. I couldn't remember how I got on Titanic. I couldn't even remember my name. But I knew I was innocent. The police made me sign some paperwork. If you know what's good for you, you'll sign that confession, Jack. Then they threw me into a prison cell. It was torture. I felt like I was losing my mind. At least, what was left of it. The guards would torment me, take away my most precious possession. Where is it? Mimas? 
night I sat alone in my cell, trying to remember who I was, trying to remember her. I knew I wasn't a criminal. So I decided to escape. I snuck past the guards and crept into the warden's office. I searched madly, looking for answers, a clue as to who I was, a way to escape. And then I found it. I rushed back to my cell and started work. I was going to make it out of here, find out who I was, and find her. Stay tuned for scenes from our next episode. Next time on The Rose Diaries. Rose, they're going to hang Jack. I knew I had to escape this jail cell. Jack and I were finally together, but the police were closing in. Rose, Cal Hockley won't stop until we're dead. I love you! Jack... I'm pregnant! Jack, we all thought you were dead. Like a frozen popsicle.